What's up plant ninjas and grow gurus? Ever looked at your droopy basil and thought there's gotta be a better way? Well strap in because today we're diving headfirst into the wild world of hydroponics. We're talking about ditching the dirt and growing plants faster, bigger, and tastier, all with water and a little science magic. But hold on to your gardening gloves folks because there are more hydroponic systems out there than flavors of kombucha. So, to save you from a world of DIY disasters and nutrient nightmares, we're conducting the ultimate experiment, a head-to-head, root-to-fruit battle of the hydroponic heavyweights. Which system will reign supreme? Will it be the simplicity of Kratky, the efficiency of NFT, the root-pampering luxury of deepwater culture, or the tidal power of ebb and flow? Let's find out. Ever wondered which hydroponic system actually grows plants faster? Which one's the easiest to maintain? Or, which one secretly stinks the most when you get it wrong? Today we're putting the top 4 hydroponic methods, Kratky, NFT, deep water culture, and ebb and flow, head to head in the ultimate grow off. First up we've got the Kratky method, the OG of DIY hydroponics. Imagine this, a bucket, some nutrient solution, your plant babies, and that's pretty much it. No pumps, no fancy equipment, just pure plant powered simplicity. It's perfect for beginners who are still a little intimidated by the whole playing scientist with their vegetables thing. Here's how it works. You've got your plant nestled snugly in a net pot, roots dangling down into a reservoir of nutrient-rich water. As the plant drinks up the solution, the water level drops, and get this, the air pockets that form actually encourage root growth. It's like a little vacation for your plants hanging out, soaking up nutrients, and getting their air yoga on. Now, the beauty of Kratky is its set-it-and-forget-it vibe. You only need to refill the reservoir every week or two depending on how thirsty your plants get. Plus, it's incredibly budget-friendly. No need to shell out for expensive pumps or timers, just grab a bucket and get growing. But hey, every system has its quirks, right? With Kratky, you gotta be mindful of nutrient balance. Since you're not constantly replenishing the solution, it can get a little out of whack, so regular monitoring is key. We're talking pH levels, nutrient concentrations, the whole shebang. Don't worry though, we've got your back. We'll hook you up with all the tools and tips you need to keep your Kratky system running smoother than a well-oiled... Well, you get the idea. For this experiment, we're testing the Kratky method with everyone's favorite leafy green, lettuce. We've got four identical buckets, each with a healthy lettuce seedling, basking in the glory of a perfectly balanced nutrient solution. Will the simplicity of Kratky translate to explosive lettuce growth? Or will our laid-back approach leave us with a salad bowl full of disappointment? Stay tuned to find out. Next up, we're shifting gears and cranking up the efficiency with the Nutrient Film Technique, or NFT for those in the know. Picture this. A constant, shallow stream of nutrient solution flowing over the bare roots of your plants, like a miniature lazy river for maximum nutrient absorption. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet for your plants, and trust me, they're gonna be lining up for seconds. Now the science behind NFT is pretty neat. Instead of roots drowning in a static solution, they're constantly exposed to fresh oxygen and nutrients which means faster growth and higher yields. It's like the difference between jogging on a treadmill and swimming in a nutrient-packed pool. Your plants will be doing laps in no time. But hold your horses, speed demons, because NFT can be a bit finicky to set up. We're talking precise angles for your grow pipes, meticulous flow rates, and a constant eye on that pH balance. It's a delicate dance between giving your plants the perfect amount of everything and accidentally creating a swamp monster in your grow tent. But hey, that's what we're here for, right? To boldly go where no hydroponic gardener has gone before and document every triumph and tribulation along the way. For our NFT experiment, we're going for a classic juicy, vibrant strawberries. We've got our channels tilted just right, our nutrient solution flowing like a dream, and our strawberry plants primed for maximum berry production. Will the NFT system live up to its reputation as the speedster of hydroponics? Or will our strawberries be stuck in the slow lane? Let's find out. Chapter 3, Deep Water Culture Root Spa or Hydroponic Horror Show. Get ready to dive deep folks because we're about to explore the wonderful world of deep water culture, also known as DWC. This method is all about giving your plants roots the royal treatment, a luxurious soak in a bubbly, oxygen-rich nutrient bath. Imagine the most relaxing jacuzzi experience, but for plants. It's basically a hydroponic spa day, 24-7. Now the magic of DWC lies in its simplicity and effectiveness. You've got your plants suspended in net pots, roots submerged in a constantly aerated solution. And when I say aerated, I mean we're talking full-on bubble party down there. This constant supply of oxygen is like giving your plants a supercharge, allowing them to absorb nutrients at lightning speed. But, and there's always a but, right? DWC can be a bit high maintenance, 
Remember that whole oxygen thing? Yeah, that requires a reliable air pump running 24-7. If that bad boy goes kaput, your plant's spa day turns into a watery nightmare faster than you can say root rot. Plus, DWC requires a keen eye for detail. We're talking regular pH and nutrient checks, water top-offs, and the occasional deep clean to prevent any unwanted gunk from crashing the party. But hey, for the reward of explosive plant growth and monster yields, a little TLC goes a long way, right? For our DWC experiment, we're going big and bold with tomatoes. We've got our buckets prepped with air stones bubbling away, our tomato plants secured in their net pot thrones, and our fingers crossed for a bountiful harvest. Will the DWC system live up to its reputation as the powerhouse of hydroponics? Or will our tomato dreams be dashed against the rocks of root rot? Stay tuned to find out. Chapter 4 Ebb and Flow Riding the Hydroponic Tide to Bounty Town. Hold on tight, plant parents, because we're about to ride the wave of the ebb and flow system, also known as flood and drain. This method is all about mimicking nature's rhythm, giving your plants a gentle bath of nutrients followed by a period of air and drainage, just like the ebb and flow of the tide. Think of it like this, your plants are chilling on a beach, soaking up the sun and nutrients when, whoosh, the tide rolls in, delivering a fresh batch of goodies. Then, as the tide recedes, it leaves behind a perfectly moist environment for those roots to breathe and stretch their little root hairs. Now, the beauty of ebb and flow lies in its balance. The flood cycle ensures that your plants get all the hydration and nutrients they need, while the drain cycle prevents those roots from getting waterlogged and turning into a soggy mess. It's a delicate dance, but when done right it can lead to some seriously impressive results. But of course no hydroponic system is without its quirks, and ebb and flow is no exception. This method requires a bit more equipment than Kratky. We're talking about a timer, a submersible pump, and a bit of plumbing know-how. But trust me, once you see those plants thriving on their tidal schedule, you'll be hooked. For our ebb and flow challenge, we're going for a taste of the tropics with some vibrant leafy spinach. We've got our grow tray prepped, our pump primed, and our timer set for optimal spinach satisfaction. Will the ebb and flow system deliver a bounty of leafy goodness? Or will our spinach dreams be left high and dry? Let's find out. The verdict is in. Which hydroponic system reigns supreme? Well, there you have it, folks, the ultimate hydroponic showdown. We've pushed these systems to their limits, showered our plants with love and nutrients, and learned a thing or two about the amazing world of water-based gardening. But the real question is, which method came out on top? Which system grew the biggest, tastiest, and most impressive plants? You'll have to watch until the very end to find out. But trust me, the results were surprising even for us seasoned hydro homies. In the meantime, we want to hear from you. Which system would you use in your setup? Comment below with your pick. And if you've had a hydro disaster, I want to hear that too. Funniest fail gets pinned. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe for more grow-offs, and turn on the bell for part 2, Aeroponics vs. Tower Systems. It's going to get Rudy.